we'll have already a first person in the chat looking forward to the talk. We are so much looking forward to talking to you today. And uh, my name is Maria, and uh, the full name is Maria Mogilnaya. I am a principal banker in the trade facilitation program at the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development in London, one of the multilateral development banks and the only bank that is still growing its membership. I am very proud to, to represent uh, the EBID today. And I'm joined by Andrea. Andrea, would you like to introduce yourself? Thank you, Maria. Thank you. Uh, my name is Andrea Fusinini. I live and work in Italy, in Florence, by the way. I'm a seasoned, unfortunately, seasoned trade finance manager who work basically for multinational companies. Uh, I recently, actually in two years, joined the Happy Ledger community. And I started out in January 2020 as our uh, my TV as chairperson for the trade fund special interest group so i always ask my maria to join her in this in this interesting panel to to give support to the discussion ongoing disruption in trade finance uh, through blockchain through enterprise blockchain solutions great thank so you thank andrea you for this opportunity in, in joining you today my pleasure Pleasure is all mine. So just a few housekeeping or session keeping uh, uh, things. Uh, we will, the session will go on for 30 minutes and Andrea and I will talk for about 20 minutes and we will be very happy to take your questions at the end. Please use the chat function and uh, send them to us and we will then read them out uh, so that everyone can, uh, whoever was watching the recording knows the questions and we will try to answer everything that you want to know and if we do not know the answer or we cannot answer today we will for sure do that and uh, we'll try to get back to you so i'm going to share my screen right now yes please andrea i know that i will stop seeing you <laughs> good so no problem if you don't see me it's much better <laughs> you have a much better look. so just to uh, remind everyone that the session is on legal and regulatory barriers to digital trade and that's what we're going to talk today about. Um, as far as I know from the agenda, this is one of only three sessions during this global forum on trade finance. So I'm very happy, Andrea, that we can talk about it today and that it's, uh, it was included in the program and the agenda because it's very important. So I would like to show you this picture. Uh, those of you who may have seen it, it first appeared on Reddit and then was circulated in social media by, the, by a lot of trade finance specialists around the world. As you can see here, there is a lot of paper. And um, I counted for you, so you don't need to count. There are 71 pieces of paper in this photo. And this is the amount of paperwork required for one single shipment of pet food or food for animals, for domestic animals from the UK to Croatia. Uh, if you wonder whether it was before or after Brexit, this I don't know, but I think it shouldn't really matter because no matter what, there should not be so much paper required also with um, uh, ink stamps in red and uh, double-sided uh, printing and so on uh, for a single trade transaction. Uh, the uh, coronavirus pandemic put a lot of emphasis on uh, paper in trade and trade finance in the last uh, what is now uh, 18 months and uh, a lot of shipments were delayed a lot of uh, goods were not cleared in customs because of paper and that's one of the major problems in trade finance at the moment and in terms of digitalization or digital transition in trade finance so as a little preview andrea would you like to tell us now what is uh, currently happening in uh, digitalization and trade finance. Sure, sure, Maria. Thank you so much for handing this to me. Uh, as you said, uh, trade finance, uh, I call it a vintage industry, actually. Uh, it's a very ancient one. Uh, let me add one thing. When you think about trade finance, you think about paper, basically, as you show perfectly in that picture. You also think about, you know, Middle Ages, not because it's an ancient one, but okay, it was created basically at both times. And it literally evolved 
but the core of the industry remain unchanged. Countries. Okay, it is still reg regulation changes, but the core stays. So you mentioned, Maria, the big destruction, the very first one that was brought by COVID-19 out of 2020. It's correct. Think about that. You know, uh, some banks had to issue specific regulations for disruption. So this was the first crazy for modernizing the industry and a heavy load of, let's say, initiatives were uh, started out all over the world. Uh, the main one is the first one you can see listed on top of this slide, which is the Uncentral Model Law on Electronic Transferable Records. This is some kind of, uh, let's say, the milestone for changing. Uh, this is a Model Law, which means Basically, it supplies the framework to be accepted at national levels by each and every country. Uh, so far, actually at the beginning of 2020, this model law was only accepted by one single country, which is in the Middle East. It was Bahrain, the Kingdom of Bahrain. And uh, it was only accepted at one point i mean it was accepted by the customs by the institutional law but not the situation has changed other countries have joined this small law and you know the situation is constantly evolved as you can see here we saw singapore through the national law and abu dhabi global markets these are two main initiative that joined Bahrain. So the situation is completely changing and more and more countries are planning to modify national laws to accept these electronic transferable records. Think about that. You know, this is going to change dramatically, drastically the situation. Um, second thing is the, what you can see, the ICC, the International Chamber of Commerce, the SI, the digital standard, was, you know, set up in part of 2020 by the uh, International Chamber of Commerce in Singapore. Uh, and that was an institution that stepped in the picture and that is striving in order to change the global outlook as the ITFA, the so-called ITFA International for free association first a project which is led by a friend of mine Akila D'Antoni which is advocating the ch this change in the digital digitalization of trade finance and secondly through the initiative that is digital negotiable instruments those two led in parallel and us uh, you know are heavily impacting the industry by uh, you know introducing this new form of instruments uh, on the other side of the oceans they are not sleeping on laurel things also is evolving thanks to the activity led by banks association finance and trade the baft which recently introduced a new standard for uh international trade and trade finance which is called distribution payment uh, which is a new standard DLT, so which is specifically was created for being run on DLTs. And it's open source, utilizable by anybody interested in it. So you big change of picture, you see this four main initiatives like worldwide. I think you can, Maria, where we are placed. Uh, where our activity uh, has set itself up. Uh, we're just at the crossroads of all those initiatives. Uh, we set ourselves up, you know, as a sort of connecting point between all these activities. We started out October, 2000, October 2020 last year. Also, Kyler having a speech with ourselves, you can by the way on the slide 
and it details us with plenty of uh, uh, news about what's going on in Singapore through the DSI and what Singapore is achieving by setting up this, uh, this specific project, which is called Singapore Trade Trust, which was set and is open source again, and it's ready to find collaboration all over the world. And some are about to be initiated. Epic region, think about Australia uh, and other countries to be added. Uh, we had another very interesting meeting uh, in our city, 16th of March, 2021, where we hosted a very interesting speech, which I advise you to go and visit. Uh, we had Mr. Andre Kastelman, one of the main actors within the ITFA and uh, DNA initiatives. Uh, it was joined by Gunnar Collin and uh, Jacob de Jong of Boleno International. Uh, they gave us plenty of insights about the digital negotiable instruments. Uh, later this year, we had another interesting speech. We had another interesting meeting on paperless promissory notes on DLPC, the new standard that I mentioned in the former slides. And we had FQX, a company from Switzerland, who has devised this new instrument, which is supposed to, let's say, provide with a solution for one of the main problems in nowadays trade finance, which is the trade finance gap providing liquidity to micro, small and medium enterprises dealing with international. Uh, the later this 7th of April, we had the honor to Luca Castellani, a friend of ourselves, having a speech about this electronic records, literally through this model. And it was joined by Mr. Ren UK, from Singapore Trade Trust, they gave us plenty of details about what's going on in Singapore and how this uh, model can step in as a in boosting digitization and trade finance. Last of the meetings that we have was uh, the one in, on 11th May this year. We guessed a very interesting speech by Harry Rantanen from North uh, Finland, and it gave us plenty of details about what's going on in Northern Europe in this respect as well, as well, in terms of digitization, in terms of creating new patterns, new semantics for, you know, uh, transmission for, uh, let's say, uh, enhancing uh, transmission of electronic transferable records. So this is the activity of our six so far in a much larger picture, which is internationally uh, carried out by several institutions. You can... Yes, Andre, it's, it's very interesting. And I'm sure that a lot of... Uh, so the slides will be shared. There, there are links. Please yeah. watch uh, all these meetings and uh, recordings. And I really hope that you will get much more uh, interest after this talk into your trade finance seek and that people will uh, join. To, yeah, of to, course, you, you're all invited to join us, you know, it's yes. a free, it's a free uh, community for yes. anybody who is interested, both on the technical side, for joining us and giving, you know, insights. Yes, and here, so we, what, is, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. sorry, Maria, you, you can step in, no worries, you yes. can take the word anytime you like. Yes, yeah, so I would, would like to talk about this and maybe you could talk for on the next one. So here is um, a snippet from a report from 2018. Uh, I don't think anything has changed, unfortunately, since then. So it would be as relevant as in 2018, a report by Bain and Company commissioned by HSBC, where they actually went through all the processes and trade, uh, and trade finance. So this is an example of a and issuance of a letter of credit. So we spoke a bit about paper and uh, the drive to make trade, of, trade and trade finance industry paperless, but there are other benefits that uh, blockchain can bring to trade finance. And this is an example where you could uh, potentially reduce the processing time by 80%. And um, to illustrate it in a different way, Andrea, would you like to talk about this? Sure. And I, I see that some parts are not showing here. So, yeah, the second part would be optimized with digitization. Uh, and the third one is blockchain enabled. 
Exactly, Maria. Uh, consider this, you know, we base our uh, argumentation on the basic fact that, you know, we stock on a picture that is based on an LC, on a letter of credit. So a lot of uh, work to be done on procedures in documents, you know, it's a straight line connecting the buyer and the seller, actually the seller and the buyer. So there are several once the LC is in place, the provide to the beneficiary, which ships the goods. So, you know, you have several intermediate steps to undergo. Once you ship, you have to produce the documents. Documents shall be sent physically in a physical form to the beneficiary of the letter of credit. They have to be checked on their side. They have to be forwarded to the confirming bank which from her side herself, she checks the documents. If you find a strict conformity with the LC's, uh, let's say, clauses, it forwards the documents themselves to the open bank, which once again checks the documents and if found in strict conformity with the LC, really. Uh, then there are other steps, you know, one, Found them. this have to be released and handled to the final customer, which then undergoes through the custom. Now the entity involved in the picture. So what you can see here in this line with all this, there are different operations. These are in a physical space nowadays operations. Once it digitizes, you see that three operations are clear, literally canceled. So ergonomically, it's a large advantage for anybody. Consider the margins are affected positively. Once you go through the blockchain, the line gets shorter and shorter. So you see basically three intermediate steps. Yes, Andrea, and I think one, Sorry, one, one, of the, uh, one of the main benefits here would be that in the long process, there is a lot of reconciliation that needs to be done because parties, yeah. not, the information is not presented at the, in real time and you have asymmetric information presentation. Yeah. So reconciliation can really, uh, I mean, based on this picture can have the time and cost uh, of the process. Uh, if yeah, talk, absolutely. Oh, here it is. You see, so it's all back. So I should have clicked through extra buttons. No uh, so you can see here optimized with digitization and blockchain uh, enabled. Um, you if consider that the, you have so many sources of information in the letter of credit, Maria. So you have back and lease, you have, you know, <clears throat> you have the bill of lading, you have the invoices, all of these to be matched between them. You have a number of the LC, which should be quoted in each and every document. If you put blockchain in the picture, this allow you to reconcile all this information in a much quicker way than it's done in a physical space and also in a barely digital way. Yes. And I mean, the other things, the benefits could be not only instant and transparent communication between importers, exporters, banks, and all other participants, as Andrea okay. mentioned, there are a lot of them, a lot. Trade is a very complex, uh, complex uh, chain and trade finance on top of this makes it even more complex. Automatic payments can be affected through smart contracts, uh, which means that there are no extra steps required to request a payment and to process it. Everything can be automated. And of course, the reconciliation and end-to-end -end tracking of goods in transit is also a very important uh, uh, point. Yeah. So if we talk about the legal requirements here, you can see, and uh, this is my head of uh, a representative of the European Bank for Construction and Development comes in. Um, it's very important that our region, and we, we operate in um, economies from Morocco to Mongolia and from Estonia to Egypt. And um, you can see here, this is a snippet from the ICC Global Survey on Trade Finance from 2020. I only picked the countries that are in our region. And you can see uh, the um, acceptance of digital documents 
And these are all the types of documents that you can see, letter of credit, bill of lading, bill of exchange, uh, insurance policy, promissory note that can be required or can be part of a trade finance transaction. And you can see that um, the re respondents to the survey, which would be usually banks, some of them did not know or were not, not sure whether there is a paper or digital uh, allowance for this document. Uh, you see orange are all the ones that must be in paper. And um, you will see green ones where digital is allowed. So it's not the only uh, option, but at least it's allowed. And I would like to draw your attention to Egypt, which seems to be, at least based on this data, is um, the country that is um, ahead of others in our region. And I would like to give you an example of the actual application. Uh, from July this year, uh, Egypt, through its uh, customs, will require mandatory advanced cargo information declarations. And not only they have set up a national single window, which is recommended by the United Nations for trade facilitation in general, but they also partner with Cargo X uh, to provide a DLT-based uh, courier service, or document transfer service. And it's actually quite fascinating to think about that, that the importer and the exporter will be able to receive information at the same time when they know that everything is set. And um, by using NAFESA, the single window for foreign trade facilitation in Egypt, they will be able to know when the goods are coming. They will be able to know that the goods, the incoming cargo has been registered properly, which means that Egyptian customs will not turn the goods away. And I would really, I would, I really encourage you to follow this and see whether there will be a lot of news about cargo not being accepted at Egyptian customs. I'm definitely watching it from the 1st of July. I find that really fascinating as an example of application of a blockchain. And uh, I'm really happy that it comes from the region uh, where uh, the EBRD works. Yeah. So Andrea, we are coming close to the end of our talk. Let's talk about yeah. challenges. Uh, challenges well, and uh, yes. Yeah. Sorry, Maria. Uh, the first one you can see listed here is, uh, you know, I wanted firmly this uh, to be on top because we listed the finite common standard for electronic transferable records, documents, slash documents uh, <clears throat> through different countries. You know, uh, we have to find a common place. Uh, there are too many standards. Whether coming up with a single one or maybe acknowledging each other's standards will play a definite role in succeeding. You know, I often, Maria, if you remember, we, we mentioned this. This is a very regulated field, a highly regulated one. Think about the UCP, think about the EUCP, the International Standard Banking Practice. It's the perfect marriage between legal and tech, legal and, you know, IT. So we should come up with a straight, plain, seamless playground with common shared rules. This is the very first challenge we have to solve. Whether it's through the SI or something else, but we have to sort it out. Second thing is, you know, promoting an inclusive approach. We talk about technology with different stakeholders involved in this. If one of the stakeholders is left behind in terms of technology, it wouldn't work. You have to play on the same level. Otherwise, one is up there, the other is up here. It won't work. If you want to create a seamless workflow, a seamless flow of data between one point to another point, one peer to another peer, so democratize technology make it available, include everybody in the picture. And Andrea, uh, I fully agree with you. And I think here it's also the role of multilateral development banks like the EBRD absolutely. To, to bring the countries, the emerging in the emerging markets or developing countries to uh, digital uh, solutions. Because what uh, yeah. is happening at the moment is that all the global banks, they are part of all different um, consortia, different platforms, different initiatives. 
because yeah. they can, because they have a budget for this, because they have a digital strategy. Absolutely. Local banks who, for example, are the only ones in some countries that finance um, SMEs, small and medium enterprises, they are the ones who will not have a budget for digital uh, solutions. They will not have a strategy and someone needs yeah. to help them. And um, development banks have a really important role to play here, but they cannot only yeah. help some banks if the country specific legal and regulatory environment is not enabling this transition. That's, that's also yeah. something that development banks really have to step up and help uh, countries that want to pioneer these technologies, for example, like Egypt, I wish we would have helped them to pass the new customs law, but they were they were really on the ball there. They wanted to do this. There were and some animals in, in, in this, let's say, so yeah. yeah, but there are other, you know, maybe places that we can enhance. Yes. Uh, and of yes. course, this summarizes all the rest of the points, you know, we mentioned in this. When you say this, uh, let me end this, I mean, through this, which I'm, I mean, can picture perfectly what blockchain and plus blockchain is include don't exclude make yeah. it available for anybody involved in the picture you mentioned micro small and medium enterprises this is the core of you know the area ebrd manages you know think about the mediterranean countries think about middle east think about africa which is deeply the new frontier in doing this if you don't make it available if you don't make it inclusive you won't come up with any good result. Yes. So if you want to make this perfect marriage, take a very inclusive approach. And definitely yeah. that's where blockchain steps in, in my opinion. Yes, and I guess in the, in the meantime, as the markets develop, uh, this, there are examples of uh, banks or countries even to run yeah. uh, processes in parallel. Just be prepared. So if you develop a solution that will revolutionize trade finance, and you want to go to a new market, be prepared that for some time you may need to run digital and paper-based processes uh, in parallel. And it's not a joke. Uh, at the beginning uh, of, for example, implementation of uh, Bolero uh, and the electronic documents of Bolero uh, in Turkey, uh, banks were printing uh, all the documents exchanged on Bolero in paper form to comply with local uh, regulatory environments. So this is something that will be inevitable. Don't be afraid of that. And just be prepared that you need to accommodate uh, your clients or member banks, member uh, traders who are part of your solution uh, to allow them to run a paper process in parallel as their legal and regulatory environment develops. On this I'm note, really yes, Andre, we are almost we are almost at the end and I do not see yeah. questions. We have a comment that it's a very valuable content. Thank you so much for your comment. And yes, we will be sharing the presentation on the, on the yes. um, uh, global forum platform. Just, just the answer to Eugene. Uh, Eugene, you can find, I mean, on the wiki page yeah. of Hyperledger, how to join Trade Finance SIG. So you'll see plenty of instruction on how to join us. You can easily do by running the mail to the address that you can find on top of the page and you'll be automatically directed. So feel free to come to us. It's free space, as I mentioned. You're all welcome to give your insights into to this. I mean, we'll be glad to, to contribute to the discussion, of course. Thank you so much. And um, I guess, uh, Andre, it was lovely talking to you. I look forward to Great. seeing you in person when uh, when we're allowed to meet. And um, yes. Yeah, my pleasure, Maria. Thanks for giving me this opportunity. Thanks for those who joined us today. It was really interesting for me to have you here. It was my pleasure. Thank Let's you so much. Let's see you on Trend 5 and C. Bye.